Hello, my good, good friends. Today, we're going to have a look at an article from the American Conservative called The Wiggles of Weimar. Or I guess if we want to keep the alliteration going, The Wiggles of Weimar. It sounds a lot more dark and evil that way as well. So for those of us who aren't Australian, uh, The Wiggles are a musical children's act that literally everybody in Australia loves. I'm Greg. I'm Murray. I'm Anthony. And this is our friend Jeff. Jeff's always falling asleep. They've had a couple of iterations with Anthony Wiggle remaining consistent throughout. Just recently, to add a little bit of extra flavor, they have added some new characters. And the right has not taken this well. Uh, not only were our own bizarre reactionary politicians uh, upset about it, apparently it's even reached the US culture war sphere. So we're going to have a look at this article, we're going to have a look at the author of the article, and we're going to have a think about some of the arguments that are being made. So without further ado, let's get into the article. My kids were all little in the 2000s and grew up in part on The Wiggles, the Australian musical group for kids. They were huge back in the day, though I lost track of them when my kids outgrew them. Well, The Wiggles are now woke. Take a look at this recent sketch, which I've queued to the right spot. All right. Don't mind if I do. There's one last friend that loves to be around the SS Feather Sword. Now, here they come, right now. It's Shirley Sean the Unicorn, and Shirley Sean has their own boat. <laughs> Whoa! Ahoy there, Captain. Scrumptious. That's what Shirley Sean likes to say. Scrumptious. <laughs> In the clip, the character Captain Feathersword addresses the Shirley Sean Unicorn character using they them pronouns. On Twitter, someone asked about it and one of the Wiggles responded. So Shirley Sean is transgender now? Shirley Sean is a unicorn that identifies as non-binary. I found out about this via an Australian reader who wrote, I don't know if the Wiggles are a big thing in the US, but in Australia, they're synonymous with children's entertainment. Recently, they've added four new members in the name of inclusion and diversity, and it turns out that one of the occasional characters, Shirley Sean the Unicorn, now presents as non-binary. This was stated by one of the chief wiggles, Anthony Field, on Twitter on April 14. On the fandom page, you can see how they're applying their, they, them pronouns. For decades, the wiggles have been so clean-cut that parents of all political and religious persuasions have been comfortable letting their kids be entertained by them, and even now, Given that the latest news seems to have caused not so much as a ripple, I suspect many parents won't even know that their kids are now being indoctrinated by Australia's most famous children's entertainers. So let's take a step back and let's have a little think about this. Is this person's argument accurate? Is it that, oh, they're surreptitiously including their agenda in this programming and that parents don't even know? Or is it that parents don't care? Because the fact is, and here I'm going to start stating my position, non-binary people exist, obviously. So you include them because in children's entertainment, in children's programming, you're trying to give them some sense of what the world is like. Okay, now I would also like to point out that it is a unicorn <laughs> that is non-binary, a unicorn. Like Shirley Sean is a unicorn, a made up fictional character that these people are complaining about. Anyway, this whole thing about, oh, well, you know, it was so clean cut. 20 years ago, if they had included an openly gay wiggle, they would have been pushed back. 50 years ago, if they had included a non-white wiggle, they would have been pushed back. The kinds of bizarre thinking that these people do of these things are changing and everything else was fine in the past, everything was fine up until now, and now these are the changes that we don't like, is so ignorant and displays no understanding of the struggles of minority groups to exist and be represented within mainstream society. The article continues. Here's a screenshot from the fandom page. Shirley Sean the Unicorn. Shirley Sean the Unicorn is the most recent Wiggles friend. They're a yellow unicorn with yellow fur, pink and light blue stars all over their body, black eyes, a purple and a light pink swirly horn, a purple mane and tail, a red heart-shaped nose, yellow unicorn hooves, yellow mittens, and a purple five-pointed star with a yellow S inside it on their belly. Scrumptious is Shirley Sean's favorite word. Are you kidding me? 
The most unrealistic thing for these people is that Shirley Sean, the unicorn, is non-binary. Okay, what a bizarre world these people live in. What is the point of this? Why can't kids just be kids? <laughs> With what? A unicorn that is non-binary. Non-binary people exist. Unicorns, I hate to tell you, don't actually exist. If anything, you should be being more upset about the unicorn being presented this way with a purple five-pointed star with a yellow S inside it on their belly. Why do the sick, twisted elites of Anglophone culture have to force their obsessions onto little ones? Not even the Wiggles are allowed to escape the totalitarian sexual revolution. And like I said before, these people would be up in arms. I was going to say 20 years ago if there was a gay wiggle, but they probably would be up in arms now. If one of the wiggles came out and they were gay, I, 100% these people would be saying the exact same things. You know, why do the sick, twisted elites of Anglophone culture have to force their obsessions onto little ones? They live in this bizarre fantasy world where everything is an attack on them, specifically on their culture and on their traditions. I mean, talk about easily offended snowflakes, right? Dre continues... As I write in Live Not By Lies, totalitarianism is a form of government that combines political authoritarianism with an ideology that seeks to control all aspects of life. This totalitarianism won't look like the USSRs. It's not establishing itself through hard means like armed revolution or enforcing itself with gulags. Rather, it exercises control, at least initially, in soft forms. This totalitarianism is therapeutic. It masks its hatred of dissenters from its utopian ideology in the guise of helping and healing. To grasp the threat of totalitarianism, it's important to understand the difference between it and simple authoritarianism. Authoritarianism is what you have when the state monopolizes political control. That is mere dictatorship, bad certainly, but totalitarianism is much worse. According to Hannah Arendt, the foremost scholar of totalitarianism, a totalitarian society is one in which an ideology seeks to displace all prior traditions and institutions with the goal of bringing all aspects of society under control of that ideology. A totalitarian state is one that aspires to nothing less than defining and controlling reality. Truth is whatever the rulers decide it is. As Arendt has written, wherever totalitarianism has ruled, it has begun to destroy the essence of man. What you are seeing here is another manifestation of soft totalitarianism. <laughs> and look, I know what some of you are saying. There he goes again, that right wing nut getting bent out of shape over a kid's show. Yes, that is exactly what we are saying. That is exactly what the vast majority of people who can use their critical thinking functions and who are not blinded by their ideology are saying in response to you just and, and everybody else that is getting worked up about the wiggles. Oh my God. I don't want to say we live in a society, but bro, we definitely do. Sorry, but this is a big deal. They are trying to colonize the minds of preschool age children with this gender ideology lie, which seeks to destroy the essence of man. It's disgusting. They really are coming for our children. Do not be fooled. This is culture war at its purest to conquer the minds of kids so small, they don't even know that they are being indoctrinated. <laughs> it's so good. It's so unhinged. However, in all fairness, we're going to explore a little bit of Dreyer's backstory and some of his beliefs soon. And I see it as unhinged, but in his worldview, it's not. And we're going to explore that. He actually thinks all of this is true and that this is, you know, culture war and colonization of small minds and soft totalitarianism. You know, the Wiggles having a unicorn that is non-binary. I would just like to stop here and applaud the government of Hungary for caring enough about protecting its children that it passed a law forcing these creepy propagandists to keep their hands off the kids. That is an interesting way to frame what I am sure is a terrible law. Along those lines, another reader wrote, my wife and I just had our first child nine months ago. We used a pregnancy tracking app that's very chic right now, Ovia. We really loved it and, in tandem with her wonderful doctor, it helped us understand how and why my wife's pregnancy went the way it did. It has a week-by-week -week explanation of the unborn baby's health and the mother's health. We got pregnant again, praise Allah, and we're using the same app. But I've noticed in the week-by-week -week updates, we are no longer told about pregnant mothers, but about pregnant folks. I know this is classic crotchety old man stuff, but geez, I wonder if we have a term that describes folk who get pregnant. Yeah, being pregnant. Dude, oh my God. 
This jargon all happened in the last six to nine months since our son was born. You talk about acceleration, the hard and hasty approach of this stuff. Wait, this jargon all happened. One thing changed on an app that they were using, on a medical app. The hard and hasty approach of this stuff, it's happening. Even pregnancy is politicized. Are these people living somewhere where abortion is not politicized? What? I th <laughs> Sorry. Of course, I know I just have to tune out the language control so I can focus on my wife and children. Yeah, bro, do that. Why are you writing this letter to an online American conservative? But a time is coming when I can't just tune it out. There will be trouble for those who don't publicly fall in line. And this makes sense, right? If you want to reshape a society, you have to reshape its center. Family is just about as close as you can get to the center of a normal society. A truly healthy society has got at the center. Um, <laughs> citation needed. So if you want to change society, eliminate that center, destroy it, redefine it. GK Chesterton and Bertrand Russell had this conversation a century ago. I'm younger, 25. I grew up in a conservative church body. Well, I couldn't have guessed that. Still a member, becoming a pastor in it. It's insane to think that all that stuff the crotchety old people said in my church was true redefine marriage and you lose your world. They were right. Why wasn't it credible to 10 to 16 year old me? Because they didn't have any personal holiness. We had nothing to grab onto. I think having cells of resistance is a good idea, but I feel like the only thing I have to work from is personal holiness right now. Okay, so from an app changing one word to be more medically inclusive, because yeah, you can transition, you can be a trans man and you can get pregnant, okay? From one word changing, this dude has become so bent out of shape and he sees it literally as an attempt to destroy society by trying to eliminate what he sees as the center of that society, apart from God, which is the family. We are living through a great unveiling. You can only live in denial for so long about the rottenness. Nobody can be neutral going forward. You must choose. Refusing to choose is a choice. Wow, very grandiose, very apocalyptic. I love it. I wish, you know, every day I was able to wake up and see myself as, you know, taking part in some cosmic battle about what the Wiggles are doing with their unicorn characters. Update. This letter from a woman who studies at an elite college that sends many students to government, finance and policy. The emphases are in the original letter. Please warn your readers because everyone who's a sane parent, Christian or not, needs to hear this. There is a certain type of parent who thinks, well, I'll just stop my kids from watching The Wiggles. Do not make the mistake of thinking that this gender ideology is going to evade you or your kids if you only cut out The Wiggles. It is everywhere, and the elites in charge either want it to be everywhere or will spread it everywhere because they're indifferent about it because tradition has been wiped away. Gender ideology has overtaken our elite institutions, and I know this because I go to one. I have seen the types of people who are going into education and education policy and who want to teach as an act of social justice, as opposed to the standard reasons. <laughs> what? Um, so some of you might know I'm a, I'm a high school teacher and also um, teach through universities in education degrees, nonetheless. And I'd just like to plug right now my video on Paulo Freire's critical pedagogy. Um, you should see the link in the description right now, which argues, funnily enough, that education isn't just about, you know, what she said here, the standard reasons, and that there is a far more important and more revolutionary goal to it. These are smart individuals who are going to be influential down the line and who have a high degree of educational pedigree. Gender ideology is what they care about teaching, and it is what they care about, period. They know that children are malleable and they want to... <sighs> is this why you have like Sunday school for little kids? Because we know that children are malleable and you don't teach critical thinking in Sunday school. You just teach literally what you want them to believe. They know that children are malleable and they want to take on the mantle of shaping children, especially with regards to gender, sexuality and racial grievance. They want your kids to play around with their pronouns. <laughs> I've heard many people say they believe that more people would choose to not be cisgender if they were introduced to gender theory. Yeah, fucking obviously. If your kids are not white, as my future children will not be, they will tell them that white people hate them, and thus that your kids should hate white people. What? Who? If your kids are white, they will call your kids oppressors and make them confess without absolution. 
I've heard alumni talking about their teaching careers, and they really sow in racial grievances. It is abhorrent. Sorry, 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 sorry. Don't you have to do that kind of stuff in church? These people are all good Christians. Don't you have to do that stuff in church? Don't you have to confess for, like, original sin? Things that humans never... Like, none of us literally had a choice in that stuff, if you believe in that. Like, it is baked into us. We need to ask, ask Jesus for forgiveness to be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Do they not see the... Actually, it'll come up later, but... They do understand what they're doing, and they also understand why they are opposed to this. Oh, we'll get into that later. They want your kids to learn in school about how polyamory is great, what BDSM is, pornography, how masturbation is a great way to get to know yourself, and about safe ways to practice kinky sex. And no, I am not exaggerating. These are things I have seen from groups on my campus and on other campuses dedicated to sexual education. There's literally sexual education. I know why you have it in... Oh my god. And much of their work is in creating propaganda for children and future child educators. What what do you think propaganda is? It's, do you think that propaganda is already created for children and this is just propaganda that you disagree with? Or how is it different than just merely educating children? Tell me that. They want your kids to spend their time and energy on figuring out my gender. Nobody cares about your gender, darling. Constantly which is why they believe sexual education should be taught from kindergarten onwards and they don't believe in or care about innocence. Sex and pleasure are what matter, but they don't care about your weird, guilt-ridden, religious versions of innocence, which is just misogyny, basically repackaged misogyny. They also don't care about parental rights because kids don't get to choose parents. If a parent thinks that there are two genders and that little Sally can't become little Harry, the parent is wrong and the teacher supersedes especially since many of these teachers see themselves as quasi-parents. What? You, the parent, will never ever win against that logic, and the schools will enable little Sally in becoming little Harry while calling you a horrible person, both to your child's face and to yours. I have seen this happen in high school, and that was four years ago. Things have only gotten worse since. I assume that this person is American? That is not how it works in Australia at all. I, I truly think that these people have zero understanding of how these institutions actually work. I mean, zero empathy, obviously, but, but also zero understanding of how institutions actually work. They are ideologues. They're religious and bigoted ideologues. Okay. <clears throat> In short, they want your kids. I cannot emphasize this enough. They want your kids. They want your kids. They want your kids. They think all this stuff is good and moral because this is their religion. The people who want to influence your children are effectively cult members, and the point of all cults is to make more cult members. Did she just link religion to cults? Hmm, I think I would agree there. They run their institutions the way their cult wants them to. These are our elites and our future elites, the broken people who are running or are going to be running our institutions in the future. They hate your guts, and I know this because I go to class with them. And they talk about how much they hate Christians and conservatives and white people and about how there are no differences between the sexes. They introduce themselves with pronouns. Every other day, some woman or some little girl I know changes her pronouns to she, they, or they, them, goes on testosterone, gets surgery, etc., so many beautiful women, you'd mistake some of them for models and actresses, suddenly cutting off all their hair, dyeing it blue or pink or jet black, putting on breast binders, changing their names and deepening their voices with weekly shots. So many vulnerable people flocking to gender ideology because they believe in nothing else and it offers them temporary comfort. Wow, if only we could go back to where all the vulnerable people had to flock to religion. The social currency of the day is oppression, and if you want to be involved in the mainstream, the only way you can speak is if you are oppressed in some way. So people take on mantles of oppression. <sighs> Isn't Christianity fully based on oppression? Don't Christians in America, where like 80-something percent of them are Christians and every single president is a Christian, don't they just get on to like Fox News and talk about how oppressed they are as Christians, like all the time? Like literally this article? Sorry. Gender is one of the ways you can be oppressed and therefore be able to speak, and it is one way you can find a community, because there is a big community of people there. Yeah, I mean, oppressed people talking and, and you know, minorities that can find a community of like-minded people for support. That's actually a really positive thing. It is all they talk about. It is all they think about. It is all the movement wants them to think about. 
They believe it is all they are, firing neurons, and it shows. Oh, my God. The only thing that's fundamental for them is race. And again, they want your kids believing that too. I thought the one thing that was fundamental for them was gender ideology. Anyway, do not trust secular schools, public or private. If your kids go to one, that's fine. I went to public schools myself all my life. (laughs) But make sure you talk with them. Help them find better ways to engage with the world. Guide them to God. Oh, I don't think we should do that. They're malleable. You know, better wait until they're 18 before you introduce religion to them. Join a church and make sure they have a community of like-minded people. What? I thought you were saying that finding community is bad. Engage with their lives. Don't force your views on them, but talk with them about why you don't believe in gender ideology. Teach them a higher morality than this, a higher truth, some respect for tradition. Otherwise, they might be unable to resist the purpose and the community gender ideology offers them. This is what people miss. It's not gender dysphoria, but friendship and communal support that's often making people change their whole gender identities. This is especially true for if you have daughters, and even more true for if you have smart daughters, because gender ideology offers them intellectual engagement and something to think about. Maybe an alternative is helping your smart daughters read the classics, or to take math classes outside of school. What What does American high school teach? There is... <laughs> <laughs> take math classes out outside of school <sighs> there is an entire indoctrination machine working against you the parents and you need to counter that with kindness love and patience that none of what you have described is kindness love and patience rome wasn't built in a day you might not be able to stop it but you need to acknowledge reality <laughs> And find ways of communicating about gender ideology with your kids. Do not underestimate any of this. It is evil. There are probably sane parents who read your blog and who think you are a doomsayer. You are not. You understand this ideologically and how bad it is. You are not exaggerating. In high school, I'd read about the Benedict Option and thought that it seemed ridiculous. I don't think that anymore because I have now gone to college with people who are going to be making decisions for many years down the line. They will only lose their political power and influence when things really collapse, which will be a problem in and of itself. Yeah, when things collapse, that will be a problem, I agree. My prediction is that gender ideology will blow up in the next decade or so, mostly because there are going to be medical malpractice lawsuits from women who've had their breasts locked off at the age of 16 by psychotic plastic surgeons and whose lives will have been permanently altered as a result of this gender ideology. But until the lawsuits start coming, it will get worse and worse, and there are going to be people who are left devastated by all of this. Wow, this is the most bizarre speculative dystopian fiction I've ever read. One final note. Remember that the perpetrators of this are often its victims too. They're easy to mock and easy to get angry with, but they deserve our love and compassion. The psychotic plastic surgeons, yeah, sure. Because they are people. Because they are so sad. Oh, it's nice to be able to put yourself up on a pedestal above these sad pathetic victims. I know so many people who change their gender presentation and identity, and not one of them looks genuinely happy. They are miserable. Yeah, because they're friends with you. If you are friends with anyone who's a victim of this, if you know people who are victims of this, please treat them well. Don't hate them. Hate is bad for your soul, it is bad for theirs, and they will see a caricature of opposition instead of realising that they are worth so much more than gender ideology would have them believe. Lord have mercy on us all. These people only have worth to you if they maintain the gender that society, that your traditional norms, foisters on them. You are not saying that they have genuine worth. You're saying that they now have less worth and that they must be less happy. This is just so bizarre. So he then includes a tweet, which is on screen, and then the gender elephant from um, Canadian schools or something. I don't know. I'm obviously not Canadian. So what do we think of this article, this argument, all up? It seems pretty silly. However, let's have a look at Rod Dreher, the author, who he is and what he believes, and we'll be able to figure out what he thinks he's doing. Rod Dreher, born February 14, 1967, senior editor and blogger at The American Conservative, author of several books. He's, you know, done the rounds. He does speaking. He does interviews. Um, Let's have a look at this. Views on sexuality and gender. Dreher holds to what he describes as biblical Christian teaching on sexuality and gender, including on the sinfulness of same-sex sexual relations and the naturalness of male-female difference. 
While some writers have praised Dreyer's insights into the fundamental nature of the social changes caused by the sexual revolution, others have argued that Dreyer has not sufficiently grappled with the problem of how conservative Christians should live alongside those whose lifestyles they disapprove of, and have criticised the language Dreyer has used to describe gay people. Dreyer has published numerous articles expressing alarm at the growing visibility of transgender people in American society, which he sees as part of a technology-driven revolution in our view of personhood. He has been described in The Guardian as a man who appears to view fermenting transgender panic more as a vocation than a job. In September of 2018, during Brett Kavanaugh's US Supreme Court confirmation hearing, Dreyer tweeted, I do not understand why the loutish drunken behaviour of a 17-year-old high school boy has anything to tell us about the character of a 53-year-old judge. Dreyer has been associated with a recent political movement that has been alternatively labelled post-liberalism, anti-liberalism, national conservatism, or the new nationalism. The movement has been defined in connection with a manifesto titled Against the Dead Consensus, published in First Things in March 2019, which Dreyer was a signatory to, and which argues that the pre-Trump conservative consensus failed to retard, much less reverse, the eclipse of permanent truths, family stability and communal solidarity, and too often bowed to a poisonous and censorious multiculturalism. The manifesto argues for a conservatism of national, communal and familial solidarity. Critics of the movement have compared its proponents to the intellectual defenders of fascism in the 1930s, while those sympathetic to the movement have argued that there is nothing shameful about love of one's own, the impulse that links individual self-regard and love of family to affection for one's own neighbourhood, town or city, state, and political community as a whole, the nation. So we can see from all this that he is a conservative, obviously, but a very religiously inspired conservative. His religion, his religious ideology, informs so much of his political rhetoric, and so much of it comes back to his religion and his identity and his belief system. And it's here that we can start to see why he is so outraged at the inclusion of a non-binary unicorn in a children's show in Australia. And if we have a look at some of these clips from an interview, we can start to see this even more. So this is quite a long clip of him talking, but I want to give him the benefit of showing as much context as I can for his argument. I don't want to, you know, clip it out of context and, you know, try and dunk on him. I want him to be able to explain what he is thinking about so that we can have an accurate portrayal of it. You describe progressivism as a religion. This is what really helped me connect the dots. When I read your book, mm. you sort of solved that conundrum for me because I think I was viewing some of these ideas as merely political ideas, but you make the point in your book that this is a religion. This isn't just a political ideology. It's actually a competitive religious system. The Marxists, the communists, they always come after the Christians. And so can you talk a little bit about what you call the myth of progressivism and how mm -hmm. that relates with religion. Yeah, this is something that's been around for a long time, for at least uh, a couple hundred years since the Enlightenment. The uh, progressivism says that uh, we are on a linear path through history, that things are getting better and better with each passing generation. And what we're progressing to, uh, they say, is a complete liberation of the individual from all the chains of the past, from history, from religion, from anything that uh, keeps the individual from exercising his or her free will. Now, there are some good things that have come out of progressivism, certainly. You know, I'm talking about going back from the, the Enlightenment to now. But um, the progressives, and Marx picked up on this a lot, uh, progressives believe that history is ultimately moving to a state where we live in the uh, uh, in absolute equality. And the, whatever has to be done to bring about that state is justified because that's the way history is moving. Like, uh, what was the, something that Martin Luther King said that Barack Obama brought up that, you know, about the way the arc of history bends. That is pure progressivism. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and look, a lot of us conservatives, I'm a conservative politically and theologically, a lot of us conservatives in America have come to believe the same thing, that ultimately the world is headed for a liberal democracy. And, um, 
we, we see this in a kind of a religious sense, in the sense of assuming that this is written into the fabric of reality. And so progressives, whenever they find anybody who disagrees with them and who questions this narrative that what they're doing is making the world better and better and better, and it's inevitable, they uh, believe that we are not just wrong, but evil. And I, I have to tell you that when I um, when I was researching the Bolshevik revolution and started reading what the Bolsheviks, uh, the you know, young communists, believed, it was astonishing to me the way they that paralleled what the social justice warriors believe. Mm. Uh, specifically, they they believe that there is no such thing as absolute truth; that there is just power and how it is uh, distributed. And they believed uh, their in their ideology with such fervor, Alyssa, that you could really only describe it as religious. This uh, historian Yuri Sleskin, a Russian American historian, he wrote this amazing history of the Russian Revolution a couple of years ago, and he described the Bolsheviks as an apocalyptic secular millennial cult. You know, they and and he draws the parallels between the things the Bolsheviks believed. Uh, and uh, things that Christians, uh, millennial Christians, believed in revolutionary societies in the past. That helped me so much because it made me realize that, wait, we're not talking about ordinary politics here. We're not talking about the kind of situation where we can sit down and talk things out. We are talking about radical, zealous, uh, pseudo-religion. I think that, to go back to your original question, I think that the reason uh, intelligent people smart people, people of the middle classes and upper classes embrace this sort of thing, is they've thrown religion away, and this gives them a way to deal with their own sense of, of guilt over their privilege, and it gives them a sense of meaning without having to affirm traditional religion. I think this gives us a great understanding of why he has been so outraged by the Wiggles, including a non-binary character, and it is because Fundamentally, he views the world in a religious framework. His ontology is such that he views the world in that if you have an opposing ideology to me and you think, you know, that that ideology informs your morals, that's religion. So he can equate the two. And by equating his religiosity and the religiosity of people he disagrees with, he can say, well, there's one or the other. It's my religion versus your religion, which is, you know, Marxism, socialism, social justice, warriors, whatever. And so to him, he can't give, you know, a little bit because he is seeing the world and these ideologies on a continuum. And the further that it gets towards, you know, social justice and equality and equity, the further it gets away from his ideology and his religion. And to him, he can't have that. And there was something he said about how you can't, you know, sit down and have a nice conversation with somebody uh, anymore, you know, kind of a throwback to some, you know, lost civility. This is, is, you know, I'm sure that you could sit down and have a nice conversation with somebody that you ideologically disagreed with, politically disagreed with, about uh, a new highway bypass or about uh, the you know importance of a new hospital in a certain place as opposed to extra medical funding for other hospitals. Those things, I'm sure that you can sit down and have a reasoned debate about. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about not believing that same-sex people should be in relationships, not believing that transgender people should be visible in society. And it's important to understand that there's a difference between, you know, debating the efficacy of, of public policy and morality. He thinks that those things are immoral and that they should not be allowed in a society. And or if they're allowed, they at least shouldn't be, you know, glorified or, you know, made visible at all. And if somebody is coming to you and they are saying that you as you exist, one, I don't believe you should exist. It's immoral for you to exist. I'm going to fight against your right to exist. And then they're going to wonder why you don't want to sit there and have a civil debate with them. I think this is the most bizarre kind of tone policing. And, and of course, it's because it works for them. They get to act civil. They get to act as though they are coming from a common sense position and they want to just try and work things out. But it's because they're coming from you know, a position of power and authority. And when we see them not coming from a position of power and authority, like in his article, where he sees that he is against the current, that is where he has to make all sorts of bizarre apocalyptic 
dystopian pronunciations about the enemy and gender ideologues and they're coming for your children, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think we're seeing the same thing happen now in our country, especially with transgenderism. Mm. We're seeing uh, an elite uh, culture in the media, in universities, and in medicine embrace transgenderism for little kids. And we're seeing parents being terrified of alienating their children. So they, they force it on them, or they at least accommodate it, and they demonize other parents who question it. I've seen this happen so many times and heard from parents who are going through this nightmare who feel that they're completely isolated and not even their churches will stand with them because mm. the churches are afraid of appearing uncompassionate. Because he is so invested in his belief system, because it literally is his religion, any affront to that is the end of the world. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for staying with me. This was a little bit of a roller coaster, and I certainly appreciate it. If you like what we've got going on here and want to help to support this channel, head on over to our Patreon. We've got a few tiers. I'm about to revamp it. I, I keep saying that. I do know. But we're about to revamp it. Add some more tiers. Add some more perks. All of that kind of stuff. It's patreon.com forward slash only dog on the left. And speaking of my wonderful patrons, I'd like to thank in Puppy Preschool, Ben Snow and Extremely Online Left, my guard doggos are Jordan Mark and Tristan Hennessy, and to A. Zeitlow, Danguin and Jackson Orville, you are very good boys. They're based on feelings, not facts. I'm not your gender studies professor who has to cater to your trigger warning, microaggression, safe space bullshit. Most women are happier at home. Clean up your room, organize your local landscape, Schedule your time. And I start have to say that my brain is still in recovery mode from taking in so many high-level important ideas. <laughs>